Hello guys, we're gonna be going over photosynthesis in this chapter. Um, this is chapter eight, the chapter right after cell transport and the cell organelles. So uh, let's just get into it. All right, so the couple a uh, couple of words that we have to know before getting into the actual like process of photosynthesis is an autotroph. Think auto meaning self and troph meaning to feed. Um, these are organisms that make their own food. They're also known as producers. Um, and a basic way just to remember this is these are mostly our plants. Um, there are, are other like uh, you can see here. So there are other microorganisms um, that use photosynthesis and they're not technically plants. So just understand that these are our producers in the world. The reason why they're called producers is not because they produce oxygen, it's because they produce their own food. Next, we have our heterotrophs, and we are heterotrophs. We use other organisms for food. Um, these are also known as the consumers, but we don't produce our own food because um, we don't have those chloroplasts in our bodies. All right, next here. Uh, photosynthesis. This is the biological process that converts light energy from the sun into chemical energy and carbohydrates. Um, you can see the equation here, C, or, uh, the six carbon dioxides, the six waters with light, uh, they combine to form sugar and oxygen. Here's a pretty cool animation of what that process looks like. You can see again, carbon dioxide and water, um, they're going to be trapped together in the plant. They're going to use light. The plant's going to use light to combine those together to form carbon dioxide and oxygen. One thing that we have to understand in this chapter is carbon. Uh, the, the, the carbohydrates here are the main product. They're not the byproduct. They're the main product. The byproduct, or it's like almost like a waste product for the plant, is oxygen. I know it sounds kind of weird because we all need oxygen, but the plant really doesn't care about us. It's not producing. It's not you know waking up every morning and saying, "Oh, I can't wait to you know produce oxygen." It's, it's primarily trying to produce this carbon dioxide for the plant. So again, this is a byproduct. This is the, uh, this is the main product here. I, re I thought I was pretty cool until I realized that plants eat the sun and poop out air. Yeah, that's kind of crazy to think about. So a uh, couple features of the plant here. I'm trying to move my image around here so I can see here. There we go. So stomata, these are openings on the underside of leaves and they are where gas exchange occurs. You can kind of look like they look like mouths here. Um, this is where oxygen water, uh, I'm sorry, this is where oxygen enters. Let me get my, my words right here. It's where oxygen water leaves, but carbon dioxide enters. So this is where essentially the plant breathes. Now, don't think that the water is entering as well. Where do we get water from a plant? So like where does a plant get water? It's through its roots. So don't think water is going up through this or up through these like these locations here on the leaves. The plant has to use its roots to get the water. Uh, plants pull, fr pull water from the ground through their roots, like I said, using osmotic pressure, um, stomata closed during the day uh, to help prevent water loss. Because if these these openings were open, it would be really hot, so the water would, would evaporate out through these, these stomata. So they close them usually throughout the day to prevent water loss. You can see the oxygen coming out, the water also coming out. Carbon dioxide should be coming in. Here we go. Yep, carbon dioxide comes in. So this is pretty much where the plant kind of breathes. All right, light. Um, light and pigments. So a pigment is a compound that absorbs light um, and only usually certain wavelengths of light. You can see our visible light spectrum. Obviously, most plants are green, which means that the uh, plant is going to absorb a lot of the purples, blues, yellows, oranges, and reds and reflect green. So it's not going to absorb the green. It's going to reflect the green. That's why it looks green. So it absorbs these wavelengths and these wavelengths really well, but not these wavelengths very well. And you can see down here, I like this image because it shows you what a pigment does. It, it absorbs some wavelengths of light, but not all of the wavelengths of light. And we're not going to watch that. All right. Chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is one of the main pigments found in plants. Uh, they're light, located in something called a thylakoid membrane. I'm, I'm, I know I haven't, I haven't gone over this yet, but... Thylakoids are in the chloroplast, and again, chlorophyll doesn't absorb much green light. Um, it reflects the green light into our eyes, so that's why they appear green. Other, as you can see here, it says other pigments allow the, the plant to absorb more energy from the light. Um, yeah, so this, these are this is just chlorophyll. I'm sure you've heard of it heard of it before. The analogy I give is chlorophyll is like the solar plant panels of a like a solar power plant. They absorb the light and then transfer that energy into workable, usable energy. Couple of videos here that I'm going to skip for now. Ooh, 
So this is what the this is called an absorb absorption spectrum, and this shows you how uh, the different pig pigments in the plants are absorbed. So you can see chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, the carotenoids. There are other pigments. They do a great job of absor absorbing the purples and the blues. Not a good job at absor absorbing the greens, and a good job at absorbing the yellows, oranges, and reds here. More videos. I'm just going to skip for now. So what are these little dots? They're chloroplasts. All right, so what are these little dots? They're chloroplasts, and they're found inside the plant cell. You can see these are square cells, and they're green, So, and then you can see these dots here. Those uh, little, like, spheres are the chloroplasts. We learned about them last chapter. We're going to learn about them a little more in this chapter. Oh, let me go back. Let me go back. Back. Here we go. All right, so uh, like I said before, the chloroplast actually has two membranes, an inner and an outer membrane. Um, and the solution inside the membranes here, you can see this, like the gray part here, that's called the stroma. That's like the, uh, the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. So imagine like the chloroplast is like a cell on its own inside the cell. The stroma is like the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. All right, so a thylakoid. These are like a, I always call them a photosynthetic pancake. You can see how they look like a pancake here, one on top of uh, another. You can see it says photosynthetic disc found within the chloroplast, gr uh, granum, stack of thylakoids. So the, a thylakoid is just one. A stack of them is called a granum. A lumen, that's the liquid inside the thylakoid. So it's just a little bit different than the stroma. Uh, and we'll learn a little bit more about why it's different later on. Now, one thing I like to show students is this is what the chloroplast looks like in our images, in our diagrams. Don't think this is, this is what it looks like in real life. Um, things just look, look a little bit differently when our models. This is what a chloroplast actually looks like. You can see how those thylakoids are very, very uh, stacked, nice and you know packed together here. And it looks just a little bit different. We give it this image just to make it easier for us to understand. But this is what a true chloroplast looks like. All right, a, a really important concept that you have to know going forward, which we touched upon before, is ATP and ADP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. That's our high energy molecule. This is our energy currency of the cell. Um, ADP is our low energy molecule. This is our um, energy currency, but it's it's like devalued or it doesn't have energy. So what what would I, what I like to show students here, oh, let me go back. All right, what I like to show students here is, this is ATP, you can see the adenosine and the triphosphate. This bond right here is really important. This holds all of our energy for the uh, ATP molecule. When it breaks off, then it gives that energy to whatever it's working with. This is how you par power your body. You create millions and billions of these every single day by, by putting another phosphate group onto ADP. Now, plants do this as well in the chloroplast, and this is how they transfer energy. This is how most of life transfers energy is through this ATP and ADP system. The analogy I like to give is ATP is like a charge battery, ADP is like a dead battery. You have to recharge that battery to get energy from that, that system or that, that molecule. So we recharge these every single day, and we do that by eating things. All right, so this is going to be, I want to say difficult, but it is really hard to understand these really complex processes. Um, what I like to say is I'm going to talk about these. I just want to show you what these are like and, and kind of the complexity in these cells, but I don't want you to get bogged down with all the details. Um, but basically what happens is we have two different types of reactions in chloroplasts. We have the light and we have the, we have light reactions. We have the Calvin cycle, the light reactions, they absorb sunlight and they're going to transfer that sunlight to make ATP. So basically that, that plant is using pigments to absorb that, the energy from the sun and change it into ATP. Um, it produ <clears throat> sorry, it produces oxygen as a byproduct here. Again, it's not the main product. It's just a byproduct. This occurs usually in the thylakoids of the, uh, the chloroplast. And it only occurs during the day because, again, it needs the light. Now, when it makes that ATP, it's also going to make something called NADPH. You don't have to really worry about that molecule, but just understand this process here is going to create energy for the second process. All right, so uh, in the Calvin cycle, we're receiving the ATP or the energy from the light reactions. And again, this occurs in the stroma. But basically what happens is 
the cell or the chloroplast is going to bind carbon dioxide together to make sugar or a monosaccharide. Um, this occurs during the day and night. We used to call this the, the dark reactions, but we, we didn't like that because people got confused thinking it only occurred at night. This occurs during the day at, and night because it doesn't need the light. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it has light or not, it's just going to occur. So basically, again, what happens here is you use ATP from the first process and it's you're going to make uh, uh, like glucose, uh, fructose, the sugar molecules, these monosaccharides here in the stroma. So this is where the, the cell or the plant cell, the plant, is going to make its carbohydrates or its food. Now that, that word uh, CO2 fixation, what that basically means is we're taking carbon dioxide out of the air and we're fixing it into a plant. So this enzyme Rubisco, which I'm not going to, uh, the Rubisco sounds like a big word, but the actual word is, is, is really long. Um, Rubisco is the enzyme that's going to fix that CO2 into the sugar molecules. And it's the most abundant enzyme on earth because you can think about it. There's a lot of plant life on earth. Like, earth. like if you think about how many plants are out there compared to like humans and every other or organism, there are a lot of plants. So we have a lot of rubisco in this earth. I like to show this chart here. So again, we have six carbon dioxides. If you remember from our equation in the beginning, we have six carbon dioxides. This is a mo molecule of glucose. You can see we have carbon, 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 carbon. Each one of these carbons from the carbon dioxide is responsible for one of those carbons in the sugar. So we have carbon, 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 carbon. They are all from this carbon dioxide. Okay, so these carbon di in, in, in your in your sugar molecules are from carbon dioxide. So if you think about it, when you eat a plant, you are eating the carbon dioxide that the plant used to make the sugar. So you are kind of eating the carbon dioxide in the sugar form. Yeah, it's weird to think about, but yeah, it is. Now the end product of a uh, the Calvin cycle is sugar. So when we produce this or a plant produces the sugar, it can use it for a lot of different things like a structural component in cellulose, which it uses to uh, make its walls or it can be used for energy, like glucose. All right, factors that influence photosynthesis. So um, a couple of factors here that influence photosynthesis. The more the light there is for photosynthesis, the better, usually. It depends on every type of plant, but usually the more light, the, the better. Until you reach a certain point, um, if you had like a thousand lights on a tree, you know, day, day and night, 24-7, at a certain point, it really doesn't matter how much light you put on it. Like it, the, the plant's getting enough light, it can't use that light anymore. Um, so it will top off. You can see here we have this this light or the, the light intensity. As it increases, we see an increase in photosynthesis until a certain point. Warmer temperatures will increase photosynthesis. Yeah, plants like warmer temperatures. Obviously, during the winter, there's not much photosynthesis going on until you reach a certain point. And actually, at the end of this graph, it will start to go down. So like. A tree can't grow in like 200 degree weather. It just, it's not going to uh, work. So uh, the more heat, the better for photosynthesis. That's why plants don't really grow in the winter because it's really cold out. It's one of the reasons. Uh, more CO2 and more water uh, as well. As you can see here, uh, the, the, oh, I had these mixed up. Sorry, the, the temperature ones over here, the, the carbon dioxide. Yeah, the more CO2 that's in the atmosphere, the better. However, no, I'm not saying that because we're going to talk about climate change next. I said, I'm like, oh, I, I want to say that. Yeah, so CO2, the more CO2, the more water, of course, more photosynthesis until you reach a certain point, then it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to increase the uh, overall um, photosynthesis, photosynthetic rates here. So I'm going to briefly talk about the carbon cycle. We come back to this when we talk about ecology, but uh, this is a part of the, the carbon cycle. You can see your photosynthetic organisms create 160 billion metric tons every year of organic material. So we're taking a lot of that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. You can see here the CO2 is, is, is going into the plants. And once they decay, it's going to be used for, uh, by other organisms. And it's just a, a cycle of carbon through uh, the different different organisms, different species, different levels of the ecosystem. But um, plants take in a huge amount of CO2, and we, we, we need those plants to take in that CO2 to regulate the amount of CO2 in our atmosphere. And you're going to see in next chapter, it's not being regulated as it was before, and we're seeing a much larger increase in CO2 in today's atmosphere. I think this is the end of the chapter. Let's see. Yeah, end of the chapter.